Hello, and welcome to Tuning In, Tuning Up. I'm Lori Townsend from the UBC School of Music, and I'm here virtually with Denise Ball, an executive producer with CBC Radio 2. With the world having turned upside down, we're introducing Tuning In, Tuning Up as a companion to our online streams of the school's Wednesday noon hour concerts. Each week, we're inviting local professionals in the music field whose work involves skilled listening to share some of their tips. Denise Ball is one of our professional listeners here to open our, our ears. She has spent over two decades working with some of the world's finest musicians and broadcasters. Welcome, Denise. Hey, Laura, it's good to be here. Ah, you know, we've known each other for years, and I've Long known- time. <laughs> And I've never asked you what you listen for when deciding if a recording is broadcast worthy. I'm curious. Oh gosh, there's so many things to listen for. I mean, the, you know, there, there's the, essentially the, the technical aspects of a performance, whether everything's in tune, whether it's together, um, you know, whether most of the most, mostly the right notes are played. But there's also an intangible kind of thing that I'm looking for, which has to do more with, you know, is this artist able to express, um, uh, you know, a full range of emotion, a full range of color. And fundamentally, you know, broadcasting, as with performance, is all about telling a story. It comes down to, is there a narrative arc? Does it begin and end with a sense of logic and flow and a sensitivity to nuance? So. You know, it's a combination of things. There's no one secret that will, you know, get your record played on the air, but it's, um, it's a combination of things that just simply make, in, make up a, a terrific performance of any kind. Cool. Now, of course, you're listening with your ears and your brain is working overtime because there's a million uh, stimuli is happening and you're making instant judgments with all of that that's happening, but there's there's maybe more to it than that. What what is there? Well, you know, I, I we listen with all of our senses, and I think there was a really interesting study a few years ago, where both professional and amateur listeners were asked to rate qualities of performance. Um, and I'm not talking just about recorded performance, but I'm talking about the actual presentation of a concert or a recital, uh, regardless of whether they were professionals or amateurs visual, the visual impact of a performance had as much to do with what somebody thought of that performance as the audio did. So how you take the stage, how you approach the piano, how you acknowledge the audience, what kind of, you know, visual communication you establish with the audience. Do you smile? Do you just kind of shuffle on? All of these things affect how people receive your performance. And you know, you will be criticized for not playing well if you don't look like you own the place and, and you'd rather be there than anywhere else on, on earth. Hmm, so much to think about, so much to see, so much to take mm -hmm. in. So what's one of your biggest challenges when you're taking it all in and, and judging? Uh, well, it's, it, there's an interesting kind of paradox because the thing that we tend to do, and I know I do it, um, and I used to be in a position to do an awful lot of auditions, and I always figured, oh gosh, 30 seconds in and I'll know. You know, that first impact, that initial um, attack of the string or the, the, of, of the, the note and how somebody is carrying themselves and, you know, oh yeah, you'll know after 30 seconds maybe you won't. I had a very interesting example, not recently, um, where I received the audio of an extremely famous Canadian pianist. I won't say who, uh, but somebody whose career has just, uh, is, is just, you know, in the upper stratosphere. Um, and it was a, it was a recital and, and it was fine. And the more I listened, the more I realized, oh, goodness sakes, this poor person is making more and more and more and more wrong notes. So I had made the assumption off the bat in the first 30 seconds that, oh, this is going to be magic. No, not so much. So you can't be too quick to judge. You have to take the full measure of the performance. Those opening, the, you know, that initial response, as well as how the, how the performance unfolds and whether, you know, the, the, the playing is convincing, whether the storytelling is solid. Um, 
So you have to you have to kind of get into it right away, and then and then just relax a little bit. When you say storytelling, what what kind of stories are you listening for? What 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 are you looking to be told? Oh gosh, whatever the musical story is, whatever the composer intends, it doesn't. You know, there, there's no single answer to that. It can be anything from you know a Bach two-part invention to something that just came off somebody's, um, uh, you know, uh, creative program, uh, contemporary music. It's, it's about taking the listener on a particular kind of journey. Uh, and that journey has a beginning and middle and an end. You're taken um, into a different realm. You're taken into an, a, 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 a mood, a tone, a world of sound. Uh, in all its complexity. And you know when somebody comes back from a movie and says, oh gosh, you know, I just saw this great thing and this happened and that happened. Oh wait, yeah, and remember that character. Well, no, I'm not following you. But when you actually get a, a performance that unfolds with, with absolute logic and absolute clarity and conviction, you've been told a story and uh, there's nothing more powerful really. So our students are, are taught uh, things like um, sonata form, where there's, you know, theme A, theme B. Uh, do you equate those with the characters that you're listening for at all? When, or you're getting it as, as from another realm? I'm thinking of it, um, I think, more broadly than that. Yeah. Uh, certainly form is important, absolutely. And, and it's important to understand the foundation and the architecture of the music you're, you're approaching and you're listening to um, and how that structure affects performance. You know, if you're coming back to a theme, do you approach it differently? Do you, do you approach it the same? Is it a mirror image? Is it quite different? Um, so all of those things are factors, but I think what I'm talking about is more about the conviction of the performer and, and the ability to sell, right? You, you, you hear about um, Broadway singers, right? She can sell a song. Um, it's the same as any kind of performance of any kind of music is what you've done. If you brought total conviction to your performance and have you sold me on the idea that this is a fabulous piece of music and it's interesting regardless of what it is it may be a genre i don't particularly care for but if you can if you can convince me that this is music worth hearing not just this time but maybe again and again and again you've sold me you've told me a story ah so um you've listen to so many things. You go to live performances all the time and all over the world. You've recorded tons, all that. So where do you find the magic in a performance? Because you're clearly passionate and I'm grabbing that and loving it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's very interesting. I've lived uh, with one foot in the opera world for a long time because I produce a program at about opera and I love opera. But I could probably tell you, I've seen, I've, I can count on these fingers, the number of times that I have gone to a performance of an opera and been completely transported. The performance, the story, the way it's been directed, the passion of the singers, the, the quality of the singers has, have, have simply taken me to another plane of existence. And it's, you know, I equate it with being unable to breathe, you know, for those two and a half or three hours that I'm sitting there. The problem is that I've only seen 10 of them or so. Most of the time I go to the opera, it's like, oh, wake me up for the intermission. Um, I'm serious. It's just, you know, the singers are kind of e or the, you know, the production is kind of e and it's just sort of not all coming together. But when it does, when, when you get that moment of absolute transcendence, that moment where you're just, you inhabit the sublime and you forget that the rest of the world lives, it's like, it's like a drug. And you spend the rest of your life wanting to have that experience again. And the next nine times you go, it'll be eh, but you wait for that moment when you just stop breathing because it is just better than anything. That does sound like magic. And why we are drawn to do what we do. <laughs> Absolutely. You, uh, we, we continue our search for um, those moments of music making that, that are just, uh, they're magic, really. Yes. Well, thank you, Denise. Thanks for spending this time. It's been really great chatting in this, this 
virtual forum. And I also want to thank everyone who's tuning in to this. And um, we're going to try it again. We'll bring some more um, professional listeners in. And um, that's it for now. Thank you.